In this video, we're going to do an example of an object that has positive velocity and negative acceleration. Now the sign of the velocity term tells you the direction in which the object is traveling. As an example, if an object has positive velocity, it's going to be traveling in the positive direction. In this case, the velocity vector points in the positive x direction, and the object is going to travel in the positive x direction. Whereas if the object had negative velocity or its velocity vector was pointing in the negative direction, that would indicate that the object's traveling in the negative direction. Just like velocity, the acceleration term can be either positive or negative, but the sign on the acceleration term does not indicate the direction in which the object travels. As an example, suppose you have an acceleration vector that points in the positive direction, in this case the positive x direction. This does not indicate the direction in which this object's traveling. As an example, this object could have a velocity vector that points in the opposite direction, and it's the velocity vector that tells you the direction in which this object's traveling. In this case, when the acceleration vector and the velocity vector point in opposite directions, it means that the object's going to slow down. As a second example, suppose you have an acceleration vector that points in the positive x direction, and you have a velocity vector that points in the same direction. The velocity vector is indicating the direction in which this object is traveling, the positive x direction. And also the acceleration vector is pointing in the same direction. So when the acceleration and velocity vector point in the same direction, it means that the object is going to speed up. So the only thing that the sign of the acceleration vector tells you is the direction in which the velocity is changing. It doesn't tell you the direction in which the object is moving. So let's do an example. So in this example, we're going to have a car traveling in the positive x direction, and this is going to be our coordinate system, so the velocity is pointing in the positive x direction. And if this car starts out with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second, and then applies the brakes and comes to a final velocity of 0 meters per second, so it's going to come to a rest. And let's say that it takes a total time of four seconds for this car to come to a stop, what is the acceleration? And in what direction should the acceleration vector point? Now intuitively, you should say that the acceleration vector should point in the opposite direction that the velocity vector is pointing. But let's go ahead and prove that through this example. So you know that your definition of acceleration is how fast the velocity changes, which is often written as the change in the velocity divided by the time it takes to change that object's velocity. Or you could also write this as the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time it takes to change this object's velocity, which in this case the final velocity is zero, so it will be zero meters per second minus the starting velocity, which is 20 meters per second, divided by the time it takes to change this car's velocity, which is four seconds. And in this case, what you'll get is zero minus 20, which will be negative 20, meters per second divided by a time interval of four seconds. Now negative 20 divided by four is going to be negative five and our units are going to be meters per second per second or meters per second squared. So this car's velocity is going to change by negative five meters per second every single second. So let's explore what that actually means. So I can now write this as the acceleration is negative five meters per second squared. Notice the negative sign indicating that it's in the opposite direction of the velocity vector. Now after one second, the object's velocity is going to go from 20 meters per second, and it's going to decrease by five meters per second, so the velocity after one second will be 15 meters per second. As the car continues to slow down, the velocity is going to go from 15 meters per second to 10 meters per second. Every single second that this car is traveling, its velocity is decreasing by five meters per second. And after one more second, so a total time of three seconds, the car's velocity goes from 10 meters per second to five meters per second. And then in one more second, the car's velocity goes from five meters per second to zero meters per second. Now one of the things that I'm hoping that you notice is that the change in velocity per change in time, that is the acceleration between any two points in time, is gonna be negative five meters per second squared. So every single second that this car is slowing down or applying its brakes, its velocity decreases at a constant rate of negative five meters per second every single second or negative five meters per second squared. So this is what it means for an object's acceleration to be constant. So you'll see this a lot. This is gonna be constant acceleration. And what it means is the rate at which the velocity changes stays the same. In this case, the velocity is going to decrease by negative five meters per second every single second. So the last thing I'd like to show you is a more general way of finding the final velocity of an object using the definition of constant acceleration instead of just adding and subtracting terms like we've been doing. So starting with our definition that says that acceleration is how fast the velocity changes or the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time it takes to change this object's velocity. What I want to know is 
What's the object's final velocity if it's accelerating, that is speeding up or slowing down at this rate? Now the first thing I'm going to do to find this final velocity is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by delta t. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. Notice that this delta t cancels out with this delta t. And then you get an equation that looks like the acceleration times the time over which this object's accelerating equals the final velocity of the object minus the initial velocity of the object, the starting velocity. Now what I want to know is what the final velocity is after this object's been, in this case, slowing down over this interval of time. So what I want to do is I want to add the initial velocity to both sides of this equation. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. And so what I get is my initial velocity plus the rate at which this object's velocity is changing, that is its acceleration, times the time over which this object's accelerating, and that's going to equal the final velocity of this object. And this is a more general way to find the final velocity of an object that's either slowing down or speeding up. And I'm just going to write this again right over here. This is the form you tend to see it in. You usually see it as the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration of the object times the interval of time over which this object's velocity is changing. Now you can think of this term as how much the velocity changes during the time interval over which the object is accelerating. So this term represents how much the velocity changes. And as an example, so as an example, suppose we wanted to know the final velocity of the car after it's been slowing down for three seconds. Well, you know the initial velocity of the car is 20 meters per second, and we figured out that the acceleration of the car was negative five meters per second squared. And we want to know what the velocity of the car is after three seconds of slowing down. So I'm going to write a time interval, in this case, of three seconds. Now what you're going to get is 20 meters per second plus negative five meters per second squared times three seconds is going to work out to be negative 15. In this case, this second is going to cancel out with this second squared, and you're going to get units of meters per second, which is our unit of velocity. And then when you add 20, plus a negative 15, you get five meters per second. So this is gonna be our final velocity after a time interval of three seconds has elapsed. And this method gives you a more general way of finding the final velocity of an object that's slowing down, if you know the object's acceleration and the time over which the object's slowing down or speeding up.